Hello, I'm Dr. Vinita Rattan, and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. If that sounds good to you, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get your weekly teaching. Okay, so this video is all about the skincare ingredients that you must avoid during pregnancy. So we're going to start off with the big one that I'm sure you all know, and that is a retinoid family, the family of vitamin A. So we already know that isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, can lead to miscarriage, premature births and birth defects. Now, although isotretinoin is on the stronger end of the family of vitamin A, I personally would tell you to avoid all vitamin A in your skincare. It's not that we've tested um, pregnant ladies with retinol palmitate, for example, uh, or retinol to test, you know, if that's going to affect babies that test never happened that clinical trial never happened because obviously it's unethical however from what we know from isotretinoin it's just not worth it so best to completely avoid that the second thing i would tell you to avoid is salicylic acid peels greater than two percent now during pregnancy your hormones are all over the place and basically they can encourage you stimulate your glands to produce more sebum which can lead to acne during pregnancy and unfortunately a lot of the products that you would normally use you need to avoid during pregnancy so things like isotretinoin the pill for example um, even antibiotics which you might be used to um, when you have acne you would need to avoid so the only thing really you've got left is salicylic acid beta hydroxy acid but I would make sure that you use less than two percent um, so that's a very important percentage to look for on the packaging the third thing I would say to avoid are acid peels so the only one that is deemed safe would be lactic acid um, however, if you have skin of colour, I would avoid all peels because peels tend to be AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids. And if you've watched enough of my videos, you will know I'm not a big fan because you can get hot spots, especially with glycolic acid, which can lead to burns and pigmentation. The fourth thing I would tell you to avoid are spray tans because they contain something called DHA, dihydroxyacetone. Now, DHA is basically a form of sugar that will react with the dead, dead skin cells on the surface. This basically then produces a pigment in the skin called melanoidin. Now, the thing with aerosol sprays is that you can inhale them. And so that's why we tell you to avoid it. And if you do tend to wear spray tans as a cream, then it can get into the eyes and mouth. So again, that's the reason we tell you to avoid. The fifth thing we would talk about are cellulite creams. Now, cellulite creams tend to have two actors in it. One is caffeine, and caffeine is basically a stimulant which you want to minimize during pregnancy. And the second ingredient is DMAE, and this has been known to cause neural tube defects in fetuses. The sixth thing I tell you to avoid is hydroquinone. Now, Hydroquinone is actually classed as a category C, which means that it may affect the fetus. Now, during pregnancy, your estrogen can actually stimulate your melanocytes to produce more pigment. And that's why you tend to get melasma in this area during pregnancy. So you may be tempted to use hydroquinone, but please avoid it. In addition, if you have skin of color, I would avoid hydroquinone full stop because it can lead to rebound pigmentation in skin of color. Basically what it is, is we have large melanocytes that are very easily triggered and hydroquinone can be quite irritating. And when this happens, you actually see great results while you're on it. But as soon as you come off hydroquinone, you get something called rebound pigmentation where it comes back and often comes back worse than what you started with. Um, and so for that reason, I don't use that at my clinic, at the hyperpigmentation clinic, and I wouldn't recommend that you use it at all. The next uh, ingredient I'm going to tell you not to use again, you're going to be very unhappy with me, and that is benzoyl peroxide. So benzoyl peroxide, we tend to use during acne. And again, as I said before, acne can happen during pregnancy. However, again, it's 
class as a category C and it may affect the fetus, which is why we tell you to avoid it. The next thing I tell you to avoid, again, <laughs> you're not gonna like me, and that's deodorant. So deodorant, deodorant's actually got something called aluminium hexahydrate in it. And this basically affects the cells producing sweat. Um, so basically, I'm just telling you everything you need to do to make yourself as spotty, pigmented and smelly as possible. So I can understand why you want to stop watching this video, <laughs> but hang in there. The next one I would tell you to avoid is formaldehyde. And formaldehyde is actually found in quite a lot of professional treatments, including Brazilian hair straightening, uh, which I used to do, and even gel nails, which we all do. So again, avoid it because it can lead to miscarriage, but also difficulty conceiving. Um, I, with my second child, had difficulty conceiving. It took me about a year, me and my husband, and it was one of the, the most traumatic times. I'd also suffered a miscarriage before that, which, again, was just horrific. And I know it's something that a lot of women go through, but it's actually not something you prepare for. It's not something we discuss. Um, and that's sort of why I wanted to bring it up today is because it is so common. In fact, if you bring it up with majority of the females in your family, about a quarter of them to half of them will have gone through it. They may not even know that they've gone through it. So even though it's, it's sort of your biggest nightmare um, and it's a very difficult thing to go through, do whatever you can to avoid that outcome. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. It actually doesn't matter that your nails are not done, that your hair is not straight, that you've got acne on your face, that your face is pigmenting. And mine did. I went through melasma with my second child and actually I just didn't care. I slept on sunblock and I just didn't care. I was just so grateful that I was pregnant. So. Honestly, these things just don't matter. And I promise you, once you've had your child, I will step by step get you to a place where your skin is happy, where you're happy, um, and we'll do it together. But in this precious time, it just doesn't matter. You know, let yourself go, eat what you want, do whatever you need to, to keep your baby happy, basically. And the last thing I would talk to you about is sunblock. Now, sunblock is really important because as your estrogen rises, your melanocytes become more sensitive to UV. And that's one of the reasons why melasma gets worse during pregnancy. And you can't actually wear any of the tyrosinase inhibitors that I discuss in my other videos, for example, the dark marks video. So really all you can do is block UV and try and block the trigger. Now, when it comes to choosing your sunblock, I would say go for a physical sunblock as opposed to a chemical sunblock. And today I've actually just filmed a video on the top three physical sunblocks that I would recommend for skin of color that don't leave a white cast. I'm wearing it right now, one of the ones that I've recommended. So I would recommend you go over and have a look at that video as well um, to make sure that you're wearing physical and not chemical. If you haven't already, please make sure you download your free ebook. I have put a lot of time and love into it to make sure you know all the things that can damage our skin, the skin of color, and things that are good for us. So the link is uh, down in the description box. And also ask me any questions you want on skincare. If you want me to do more pregnancy related videos, please write down exactly what you want. I've done one on stretch marks already. Um, but if there's anything specific, um, if you've got that question, I promise you a hundred other people have got that same question. So please write it down and I'll make sure I do it for you. Thank you very much.